What's going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you another top tier 2014 NAWCQ hat format deck profiles. The deck I want to bring you today is Mermel, or Atlantean Mermel as some people call it, or Water as a lot of people call it. There's a lot of different names for this deck, but one thing that hasn't changed is almost since this deck has come out up until this point now, 2014 format, this deck has been on a crazy reign. Um, just been one of the top decks, really consistent, really a cool deck too. Uh, it can be explosive and combo heavy, or it can be played very control, it can grind games really, really well, and it's always been a fan favorite deck of me and so, so many other people, and, you know, it's, it's one of those decks that is extremely enjoyable. So, not really anything else to say with that, so let's get straight into this deck. Starting off with the monsters... We play one copy of Mermel Abyss Megalo. Some builds will play two copies of this. Some will just play one. Uh, once I get into the next card, I'll kind of explain why they would choose to play two of this or one. But this is one of your better Mermel monsters. What it does is you can discard two other water monsters in your hand to special summon it. When it's special summoned, you can add a Abyss spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. And then it also has the effect that you contribute another face-up attack position water monster, and it can make a second attack in this turn, which is really strong since it has uh, 2,400 attack, so attacking twice is pretty good. And searching uh, your Abyss spell and traps from deck is also really good. The next card is I play one Mermel Abyss lead. This is the card that some builds will play, some won't. Um, you could cut this and play a second Megalo, or you could just go with the one Megalo. Most people, though, do like the option of one and one. This is slightly stronger. It has a heftier cost to summon, which is you have to discard three water monsters. It has a similar tribute effect, but instead of an additional attack, you tribute a Mermel. I believe it has to be specific. I don't use the effect that often um, to rip a card from your opponent's hand. And then it also can recycle your Abyss Spell and Traps uh, if it's summoned with its normal effect. Again, you don't really use that. It's more so just because it's another beater, and you can summon it off of some cards that I'll show later. After that, three Mermel Abyss Teus. This is one of your like best things if you see this plus some of the Atlanteans that we'll get into later. It has a lot of defense, level 7 monster. You can discard one other water monster to special summon it, and then on summon, uh, with that, you can add a level 4 or lower Mermel monster from your deck to your hand. Really, really strong, especially because it's a special summon, so whatever you add, you can then normal summon, which in a lot of cases will be your th one of your three copies of Mermel Abyss Pike, that on normal or special summon, discard a water monster, and add a level 3 water monster from deck to your hand. So it doesn't have to be a level 3 mermel, it can be level 3 water. So keep that in mind. Here's where mine changes slightly. I chose to play 2 mermel abyssaland. Some decks and a handful will play 3. I... I don't like 3. The thing with this deck is it does have a lot of normal summons, and... I would rather not normal summon this and summon it off of Abyss Sphere that you'll see later on. But, plus you can kind of recycle this too, which we'll get into in a second. But the thing with this is when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Mermel from your deck except itself. And you can only use that effect once per turn. So it's a good way to, uh, no pun intended, float into other uh, Mermel monsters. That's why I also like the Abyss lead because it is bigger. So you could like summon this, crash into something, summon the lead, and attack over it. So, again, though, I think two is the perfect ratio. If you want to go with three, go with three. I just think that's proper. After that, one Abyss Turge. Turge is one of those weird cards where it's like you kind of have to play it, but it's also not the best when you see it uh, in your opening hand or anything. But there are some really cool interactions you can do with, say, like, Lind and Turge and stuff, um, since Lind will summon the monster in damage step. So you can kind of, same with the Pike, 
activate their effects that will happen in damage step on summon to kind of play around certain back row. But what this does is you're able to, on normal or special, discard a water monster and then target a level 3 or lower water monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So it lets you recycle your things. One of the things you can recycle is your one copy of Mermel Abyss Gunned. Sadly, this card is at one in this format, but when it's discarded to activate, uh, uh, or well, I guess when it's discarded in general, you can target a Mermel monster in your graveyard, accept itself, and special summon it. So this allows you to put more bodies on the field if you're going for, you know, an OTK or something, or trying to make Xyz plays. Just a really good card overall. That's it for the Mermels. For the Atlanteans... One, Atlantean Dragoons. This card is another card at one in this format, but this card's crazy. It makes so all level three or lower Sea Serpent type monsters you control can attack your opponent directly. But the main effect is when it's sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect, you can add a Sea Serpent monster from your deck to your hand, except itself, which obviously you couldn't anyways because it's at one. But this allows you to add, say, your Abyss lead or more so your megalo or your other sea serpents that we're about to get to so two copies of atlantean marksman and two copies of heavy infantry so marksman has the effect that when it inflicts battle damage you can summon a level four or lower atlantean monster from your deck so you could summon your dragoons to field or your infantry and then when it's sent to the grave to activate a water monster effect you can target a set card on the field and destroy it so that can be back row it could be set monsters whatever heavy infantry has big defense 1600 not too bad and it gives you an additional normal summon of a level four lower um sea serpent so you can like get additional summons of these but the main effect is this when it's sent to the grave to activate a water monster is going to pop face up cards some builds will play three of this. I personally like the two and two ratio, and it's not uncommon to see two and two. Um, if you want to play more, if you're more afraid of those heavier back row decks, you can up this to three. But again, I think this is the best ratio. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, you know I like my two ofs. But also, it just is the best to not see them too often, especially since you can recycle them. After that, three copies of Genix Undyne. Uh, this on normal summon sends a water monster to your graveyard for cost and then adds a Genix controller. Really good uh, start to your turn. Say if you don't see your other Mermel stuff, this can just be a way to send uh, some of your other cards, uh, specifically the one of title. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, yeah, it, it's just really good. And it also adds you one of your two copies of controller. The reason you play two you never want to see this really, but you want the Undyne to resolve. So if you draw one, you still want to have Undyne live, especially you can search Undyne and stuff. So having these in deck is important. It's also a level three and a tuner, which is very relevant, but that's it for the Genix part. Like I said, one title, it's a level seven that can re-special summon itself out. It can banish your stuff for some of your uh, rank three plays, because I'll just tell you in advance, you do play Levier in this deck, so you can banish your stuff and summon it back out, or just use this for uh, rank sevens. Really good. And the last monster is one Mooling Glacia. You can search this off of Dragoons. While you have exactly five Mermel monsters, or not Mermel, uh, five water monsters in your grave, you can special summon it and rip a card for, or rip two cards from your opponent's hand. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and then if it leaves the field, you skip your next battle phase. But again, usually just being able to rip two cards from your opponent and have all your other plays, they're usually not playing through that. So really, really good cards. After that, for the spells, like I said, this deck does try to turbo through itself. So three upstart goblin, because you want to see your combo pieces. So why not play less cards in deck technically? three soul charge just a good card and the last spell is dark hole to clear boards and then push for game for the trap cards three abyss sphere this is the card i was talking about with lind basically you can special summon a mermel monster uh from your deck its effects are negated 
and you can activate any spell cards while this is face up. And then when it leaves the field, destroy that monster. And then this auto destroys itself during your opponent's next end phase. So ideally what you want to do is activate this during your at, when your opponent attempts to go to end phase. Summon a Lind. Once it becomes their end phase, the, this and the Lind will destroy itself. And then you'll get a summon off of Lind. The other thing, even though this negates the effect... A lot of your monsters, like Abyss Pike and stuff, are sending for cost. So even though its effects are negated, you can still discard, say, an Atlantean or something, and trigger that monster's effect. So that is something to keep in mind. Two Breakthrough Skill, just a good card. Basically four negates between the both. One Torrential, one Bottomless, one Compulse, and one Warning to round out the deck. That should be 40 cards, I believe. Moving on to the extra deck, one Mermel Abyssgaios. This needs two sevens to make. It has 2,800 attack. And while it's face up on the field, or well, I guess while face up has material, very important, uh, level five or higher monsters cannot attack. That includes your own, so keep that in mind. And then once per turn during either player's turn, you detach a material and negate the effects of face-up monsters your opponent currently controls that have less attack than this card. Again, it's beefy. It's going to usually negate everything. One Draco Sack and one Big Eye for your sevens, just because they're the best ones. One Honor Arc. A cool thing with this is if you have Dragoons under it, you are using it for... Um, in effect of a water monster initially so i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly uh it should work where you'll get the dragoon search one exiton uh going back to what i said bahamut shark is another example where you could get the effect by detaching it uh it needs two water monsters and can summon something from your extra uh we'll get to that in a second one lavaval chain to dump your uh title one Emerald to reshuffle your resources. And the last four is Dweller uh, for the mirror match or for hands and different things. Also, when this is made with water monsters, all your water monsters gain 500 attack, which this is a water deck, so it's going to come up. So really relevant there. After that, the threes, as previously mentioned, the one Levier, one Alucard to pop set cards, and this is the monster you're summoning off of the Bahamut Shark, which is Abyss Strite. Basically, when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you summon a Mermel that's in your graveyard. Uh, it also has 2,800 defense, so that's really relevant. I'm not playing... Uh, I forget the name of the card. Um, I'm kind of having a brain fart on that, so I won't even like get into that. Uh, I think Abyss Osha was the name that has a whole Mechwhip Engineer line and stuff. Choosing not to play that, uh, just play the trite at this point because it's it's better. Then we do play a couple synchros. Uh, one Leo as a 10 because any of your 7s plus a controller can make it, and this card is really big, uh, 3,100, and it's hard to out. One Gunganir to discard water monsters and then destroy cards your opponent controls. Um, really, really good spot removal stuff. And one Black Rose to blow up the board just as an option. Again, the you could technically probably cut this or swap it for something else. Like if you want to play an Engineer or something as another Xyz. But I would definitely keep in the Leo and the Black Rose as options. But that is it for this deck profile. If you guys enjoyed it, if you wouldn't mind, drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Share this with your friends. Let me know what videos you guys want to see next. And anyways, I will see you in the next video.